So here on this channel, we cover a whole range of topics, and I'd like to think that when I do talk on something, my ideas have been thought over a fair amount, and sometimes we encounter a topic where I haven't really thought things through as much as I would have liked, and today's topic is just one of those. So I'd take everything said in this video with a pinch of salt. I'm sort of exploring some ideas, playing devil's advocate for the sake of it, and maybe it doesn't yield the best of conversations. However, at the end of the video, I'm going to uh, read out something that was left for me in my Asuma Says channel on my Discord, as I think it actually kind of really quite well summarizes where perhaps I would put my, uh, my pulse on this whole topic. So stick around to the end of the video to listen to that. Now, some people are saying something in chat that I could talk about, but I don't know if I really want to. Probably need to formulate my ideas a little bit more first, but uh, we, we can go there a little bit, just a little bit. People saying like tax billionaires, tax millionaires. I mean, er everyone pays tax and contributes, right? But I, I kind of personally have a hard time with seeing the logic behind why when someone reaches a certain amount of wealth, they have to contribute more. I can see the benefits of it, but actually, do you know what? Like when I say it out loud, it's not that that I have a problem with. It's the attitude around it. Like it's like billionaires seem to get villainized for being rich. That's that's kind of what I have a problem with. It actually makes a lot of sense to tax people that make more money. The more money you make, the more you can help contribute to society. Also, it'd be helpful if taxes were properly spent. Some people are suspicious of how tax money gets used. Tax money can obviously be spent in good and bad ways. No doubt in that. But yeah, like I see this kind of like anti-billionaire uh, sort of talk. And I can kind of get it. I can get it from a, like an emotional perspective. Like it can, if you're struggling, it can be frustrating seeing other people succeed, especially if they've had, a, they've had like a leg up in society that you haven't had access to, right? But um, as a blanket rule, there's always going to be exceptions. So I find it bit difficult to uh you know see it that way i guess who needs a billion says kodu kuna great question um so like there's there's a sentiment why do we need billionaires well billionaires are also often entrepreneurial people and entre like having entrepreneurs creates a lot of innovation in society there's a lot of things that get done because smart people work really hard to make them happen you know, it's quite easy to think that uh, if you just put people in charge of stuff, they'd figure it out. But it often takes innovation. It takes someone to be rogue and to try things that other people don't dare to do. You know, so it kind of kind of like people have wealth and invest and do crazy things. with it. And I say crazy, I mean, like things to better society in some ways, like that's an element of the whole discussion. DJ Ankin says, but a billion, who needs one billions? They're selfish, eat the rich. That's the attitude that I'm talking about. You see, it's very hard to look out there in the world and understand like what would happen if you removed all the billionaires, then what would things look like, right? You probably imagine things would be better for you or whatnot, but it might not be like, like I was saying, they, they, you know, Amazon, for example, I think we can all agree that Amazon is something that's extremely beneficial for us to use. So what would the world look like without Amazon? I mean, Amazon facilitates a lot of economic activity. And if you remove these innovative people who have lots of wealth and run businesses and all of this, yeah, you know, things would look really different. So I, one of the things I like to do is play devil's advocate with ideas. And someone points out that someone like Bill Gates gives a lot of, a lot of uh, money away to charity and whatnot. Now, I had very different attitude when I was younger. And if someone had said that to me about Bill Gates, I'd be like, well, yeah, it's easy to give away a lot of money sitting from one of your many mansions, right? It's easier to give away money when you've got billions. And that's a fair point. That is a fair point. But also, the, the guy, like, you've got to take it individually. Bill Gates is clearly a very motivated individual for the benefit of humanity. If him having all that wealth and doing it is... A good or a bad thing it's kind of kind of hard to say because you can't look at a world that doesn't have bill gates and then go let's see how it's different like we've only got the one thing so it's it's tricky to figure all this stuff out i do not get this says there shouldn't be any billionaires when you get a certain amount of money you should get a certificate that says you won capitalism the rest should go to social projects right yeah i've seen that one before but 
there's all the, there's always this idea that you know you just put money somewhere and it and it works right like money can be poorly spent ideas can fail and so the risk that some entrepreneurs have to take when they succeed they become vastly wealthy and the idea is that then the wealth that's in their hands is in p- potentially good hands because they know how to innovate they know how to get things done right i'm not saying that's a blanket rule for every billionaire or anything i'm just trying to like show you the perspective a little bit more that it's tricky to look at the world and say what is their value and actually know the answer if you took away let's say we took away all these innovative billionaires right and we put all the wealth of the world in the hands of elected officials that could go horribly wrong because the reason they've been given access to the wealth are for different reasons entirely and maybe having people play the game and figure out how to win it is kind of like what you need i don't know i I just feel like these big statements and this anti-billionaire sentiment isn't particularly productive i get it i can i can kind of get why people see and think about things that way but it just seems just seems to not really encompass the whole picture elon musk is doing good for everyone says i jack zz yeah um i used to be critical of elon as some of you would know right i'm very open to having my mind changed and my opinions changed and uh even on these live streams a couple of years ago i was like oh i don't get what the deal with this guy is he's a billionaire like so what um but having learned more about him and read that book about him as well i can understand like hang on a minute this guy's like very driven to do things for the betterment of humanity and if you understand how he runs his companies as well like tesla is publicly traded but spacex isn't that's actually how he wanted to keep tesla he never wanted shareholders and it's one of the reasons you'll see him tweet things out and say ridiculous stuff from time to time is because he's not very fond of having shareholders basically at his company he doesn't want people to try and invest and make a buck off of it he wants he wants the company to pursue this goal of bettering things for our planet right through renewable energy through um cars that don't pollute and uh, that's the reason he operates that way and he's become incredibly wealthy because of how innovative the things he's doing are um so he's usually like a, a big exception to that whole like evil billionaires right like a lot of people are quite fond of him and this he's like a great example of when someone incredibly smart because he is very very smart can thrive in this environment and contribute in a t- entirely different way defendo 99 here at cheers and bits saying taxation is theft Um, I I can't agree with that personally because I think it's I think it's easy to say that and not realize where tax money goes like you might be saying that sitting in the back of a car you know watching the stream on your phone tweeting driving down a road that taxation money is paid for I'm all for society having all of us chip in and contribute together I think that's a great thing now taxation doesn't mean that things get done wisely or well but the idea should be that tax money gets spent on things that are for the benefit of all of us that might be difficult to organize through normal means might not be profitable to build roads everywhere right so taxation money might be able to help with that so uh i don't see it as theft but i can understand like being frustrated if you feel like your tax money you know maybe money's tight and it's like another thing draining on your pocket on your wallet and you think that the the government isn't doing a very good job of it but i think in essence the idea of it makes a lot of sense we all get to pitch in and contribute towards public and social projects that are for the benefit of all of us oftentimes just indirectly you know if taxation money went to social programs to help uh, homeless people or people in need like that benefits you indirectly by having a better society okay uh 100 grind is here for two months saying only tax purchases if you work your butt off why should other people tell you tell you off for how much you have or make yeah that's another really good point it's easy just to think oh you're a billionaire like this or that or whatever about you but (laughs) you know like in the game of life it must be really difficult and a lot of hard work to get that amount of wealth some people do inherit it no doubt about that but uh yeah i'm with you on that one like 
having learned about what you know people like Elon Musk do, I kind of realize you're doing something like on a level that I can't even get near. Like I could never do anything like what that guy does, right? And some people are born with that. Some people work hard for it. They educate themselves. Like it's not easy to get a billion. It's not easy. Otherwise, we'd all have a billion, right? Four of ours here at Cheers and Bits saying, if you worked every single day making 5,000 a day from the time Columbus sailed to America to the time you're reading this tweet, you would not still be a billionaire and you would still have less money than Jeff Bezos makes in a week. Fascinating, yeah. Yeah, like the extraordinary amount of wealth. Um, it is an extraordinary amount. But what you know, what is he spending it on? What is he doing with it? I don't know. Is he doing good things for society? Is he not? I, I, I just think it's so hard to 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 weigh these things up because we don't live in a uh, an environment where we can just you know put it in the simulator. What happens if we take Bezos out of the equation? Right, economic activity goes down. Everyone's not as well off overall. It, like things are so inter interconnected and tricky to figure out. It's uh, it's something all right. But, you know, it does seem like he has an extraordinary amount of wealth, but he's using it to um, do various things. I don't know too much about what he's using it for, but isn't he also trying to go to space? Do a kind of like a SpaceX thing? Probably, I don't know if he's as environmentally concerned as someone like Elon is, but yeah, you know, I'd, I'd have to go out there and learn a bit more about Bezos before I would just say, you know, these blanket statements just because of how much money he's got in his pocket, right? Uh, right, Disturbed Puppy with Cheers and Bits saying the only way to make a billion is to exploit others either through your employees by inviting in things that exploit others. Disturbed Puppy, thank you for the Cheers and Bits. Yeah, I mean, expo exploitation is kind of like part of the game, right? It's, it's, uh, it's there at every corner. Compromise, you know, you're always going to have to uh, offer up your time and your skills to earn a paycheck. Even in a more socialised society, It'd still be exchanging one thing for another, the exchange of goods, and it'll always be exploitation to some extent. Yeah, I can't, I can't really, uh, I can't really argue with that. People do get exploited in, in and along the uh, the path, right? That's that's the nature of the game. But what would it mean if Amazon didn't exploit its employees or its workers? What if we looked at it as like broad, even split? Then all of a sudden, every Amazon employee probably becomes a millionaire or a multi-millionaire, right? And then that might seem fair, all of us unfair. You'd be like, "Hang on a minute, you're working at Amazon. You're a, you're a multi-millionaire just because you work at Amazon." Then you could look at different people and what they contribute within the structure of Amazon. Some people higher up have like really important skill sets that make a lot of things happen. Some people lower down don't. It's there's no clean answer to any of this. Io Veneni says J.K. Rowling didn't exploit anyone to make her billions; just really creative. Well, that's interesting. That's very interesting because don't people who work in bookshops and who um, who work in the factories that make books and print them, don't those people get exploited because they don't get a cut of the whole profit? So you look at what she does entirely differently because it's a creative outlet. She writes a story. But you know, the movies, do people not get exploited? You know, the actors don't get paid the same as uh, the cameramen or the caterers. All over the place, it's, it's um, you know, it, life is just unfair and unbalanced all over the place. Figuring out what's truly equal and whatnot is really quite tricky. It's not, a, not an easy thing to just dive in and say you've got the answer, I think. Estellian says, wait, what? How is that exploitation? How would you define exploitation? Okay, so exploitation would be, from a more communist socialist perspective, would be the idea that um, you have workers and then you have bosses and bosses make a lot of money and the workers are exploited because when they make products, they don't get an even split, right? The idea should be that everyone gets an even split. You should be able to buy back what you create, which is... I think kind of a little bit redundant when you realize that pro productivity creates an excess of uh, wealth, you know, like innovation technology, we produce, we don't produce a flat line of wealth. But anyway, so anyone who's within the structure of generating wealth and money, uh, no one gets all the wealth and money 
in whatever play it is, if it's making a movie or running a company like Amazon, not everyone gets an equal split. So someone's getting exploited, right? I don't know who's getting exploited, but like that's the idea of exploitation, is it not? That someone in that equation is getting shorthanded. And I, I, found, I found it really interesting comment that someone could look at J.K. Rowling being a billionaire for her creative efforts to come into a structure that generates a lot of wealth and money and that through her creativity, she wouldn't be seen the same way as someone like Jeff Bezos, who's built, worked, and innovated to create the entire system that made him wealthy. Right? Think about how big of a difference that is. I'm not coming at you with an answer here. I'm not saying what they said is wrong or right. I find it fascinating that you can look at those two things so differently. Think about it. Jeff Bezos, I mean, there's, there's these really amazing videos of him in the 90s getting sort of like picked on by this news presenter guy who's like a classic old school oh you young people you computer nerds you know and all of this that having one of those attitudes like the kind of thing you'd see in an old 80s movie on a college campus where like people who were good with computers and numbers were like frowned upon by jocks or whatever that kind of thing there's a video of him like sort of getting mocked by this presenter and it's like he's working out of this uh this little this little, I don't know, rented room or whatever, and Amazon is written on a bit of cardboard with a marker pen. Like, that's how he started. And, you know, he went from that to where he is now through working his butt off. So it's like two different types of billionaires, someone who built an empire and someone who wrote a book. I'm not making any judgment on that. It's just fascinating to think how you would see those things so differently from one another. Classified Chaos is here with Cheers and Bits saying, if you don't support the billionaires, stop buying from Amazon, Apple, or any type of car, beat the man. Classified Chaos, that is a statement I think about a lot. Like, I think people don't realise how much they're constantly participating in some of the things they might uh, think they're against, right? And it comes down to one of those things, like, are you truly against it or are you not? Um, I, you know, not, not judging anyone. I'm so aware of how, like, I might think, oh, this thing's bad, but, you know, I kind of, I don't know, I, I don't like polluting the environment, but I drive my car, you know? There's a lot of that in life. There's a lot of, uh, what do you call it, hypocrisy. It's always called hypocrisy, right? But I think there's a lot more of it about than people realise in our own lives. And we got quiet... Of the stream here with Cheers and Bits saying, but do you think billionaires work 100 million times harder than you though? This is where taxes come in. The value given to people for their work is hardly ever objectively correct. We decide what things are worth, but we're not always right. Tax seeks to balance out the perfection of our value judgments to make sure every, uh, sure everyone can meet a living standard. I personally think of taxation more as being about public utility than about balance. But I see your point, and it makes sense that you can use tax in that way. Now, when it comes to billionaires working 100 million times harder than me, it's probably even bigger than that, right, the actual number. But I get your point. I think about skills as well. Like, I've done hard work to get to where I am today. Like, I have my own house that I work from, and there was a time when I honestly couldn't ever see myself affording a house. Um, uh, and I grind, I grinded to get to where we are today uh, on YouTube. I worked incredibly hard, but I worked incredibly hard at playing a computer game and, you know, finding my inner creativity and creating entertainment for people. Now, the value of that in society is probably very individualistic if you enjoy what I do. Um, I may have worked hard with some of my time. There was a point in my life when I didn't work hard at all. Jeff Bezos might have worked hard every minute of the day since he was 10 or whatever, but like the skill set that you have, some things provide more society than others. I think Amazon has provided a lot more to society than I ever have. So maybe in maybe it's provided a hundred million times more to society, right? BB Girl is here with the cheers and a bit saying, so about the tax situation, the billionaire situation, what do you think about Amazon not paying taxes? Yeah, that always sounds disgusting. I'm very aware of Amazon, Apple, Google, tax dodging, finding ways to move money around so they don't pay tax in countries. Seems to me like that's really unethical and not right. And it doesn't seem like there's much of an excuse to say that, oh, no, we actually need to do that to make the company run. I think 
I think that stuff across the board seems really, really fishy to me. Um, and I think they should pay their part and not hide and move their money around in tax havens. Uh, we've got cheers and bits noises in the ear from L7G7 with cheers and bits saying tax law, at least in the United States, is generally very, very in favour of the rich. The rich do not pay the same proportion of their income as poor people for very few reasons. One being capital versus wage tax and the other being resources to pay taxes in other countries for money and you make in the United States. A book about tax and law that I recommend is Triumph of Injustice. I like the sound of that. I'm going to uh, I'm going to look that book up. Thanks for the recommendation. Uh, one thing I would say is when we talk about like taxing and how much the rich pay and all that, right? It's very easy to go. No, the rich pay more tax than us because we, uh, you know, I might pay one grand and somebody who's rich might pay a hundred grand, right? I might only make ten grand a year and pay ten percent. They might make millions and pay one point zero point one percent, right? Like. I think it's very important when we talk about that stuff to be articulate in how we're dealing with the numbers because um, they, you know, an average person compared to an average rich person, they pay more in quantity, but in percentage, they might end up paying less. And I've watched uh, quite a few little videos, essays, all that kind of stuff about how taxation works and where the money goes and what proportions are paid at different tax brackets and it gets kind of convoluted and I think it's really important to be articulate with that stuff because you want to frame the numbers correctly so that like there's no confusion about what's being talked about because I think it, it makes sense that if you pay if you earn more and you have more money to contribute that you should contribute more and that and that it's not a flat rate for everyone. So I have a private Discord server. It has a channel called Asuma Says, dedicated for people who want to talk about this channel and the sort of tone of conversation. And Hammy Games put in this message that I actually really quite resonated with. And so I'm going to read it to you. I think some of the discomfort around the issue of billionaires is the question, how can a society be equitable with such vast differences in wealth? Emotionally, you want to say, yeah, who should have this much wealth? but I don't think we should get much innovation without there being the possibility of significant material reward. Capitalism is a wealth creating machine and of course people seek to harness it. I don't know if innovation would occur without the desire of individuals to become wealthy. Sometimes once that wealth is amassed, more altruistic desires come to the fore, i.e. the Gates Foundation, the race for space, environmentalism, etc. What troubles me more than billionaires is the dismantling of the regulatory environment where large corporations operate. Capitalism has been able to operate at largely its own will since around the 1970s. I believe a fairer, more equitable society can be built by harnessing the wealth generating capacity of capitalism governed by strong legislative frameworks which sets down employment contracts, environmental standards, antitrust policies, political donations, etc. Alongside this would be redistributive policies that would fund social programs, let the capitalists innovate and let us as a society have policies in place that would tap into the wealth capacity to build our better society. As I read that again and read it out to you, I really do think that's a really well articulated statement and one that thought, again, the most part, I pretty much wholly agree with that. That's a really good stance, I think, to have on the whole situation. And so we'll leave it right there. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you soon with another one. Bye bye.